Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be measuring bearing clearances in the bottom end of a Gen 5 LT Plus 5.3. This engine is out of a 2020 Silverado and we're doing a full rebuild on it. Now this is going to be our standard procedure that we use here at our shop when we're assembling a Gen 3 or 4 LS or any Gen 5 LT engine. The tools that we're going to be using today are going to be a micrometer and a dial bore gauge. Now we're going to be measuring the crankshaft journals for the main bearings and the connecting rod bearings and then we're going to be measuring the bearing clearances with the main bearings in the block and our rod bearings within the connecting rods. So the first thing we do is we print a form to where we can log all of our measurements and our clearances. Uh, it's a full engine blueprint form essentially. Then we put our main bearings inside the block with our main caps. We use the inside bolts. And then we torque them in sequence through both passes of the torque specs. So the first pass was 15 foot pounds and then the last pass was 110 degrees. So we got those torqued, they're ready to go, ready to be measured. But before we can set our dial bore gauge and find the clearance, we need to mic the crankshaft journals. So behind me you see we've got a freshly turned crankshaft. This crankshaft did have some damage so it had to be turned. Uh, if I remember right we went 10 thousandths. Alright so stock measurements for your crankshaft on the main journals is going to be 2.559. And then your connecting rods is going to be 2.100. 2.100. Now if you have a good machinist and you're having your crankshaft polished then there really shouldn't be any That's material come off that. It should still be 2.559 when you're done. Now if you have the crank turned like we did we had ten thousands taken off so in the end game the number we should end up with is a 2.549 but we like to measure all of them and this kind of gives us an idea of what oil weight to use and then we also photocopy this and give it to the customer that way they have the assurance of knowing exactly what the clearances are in their engine it's not just something that's just thrown together and sent out the door all right so i got me a set of gloves on to try to prevent from contaminating crankshaft journals or the bearings at all we're going to start with our two to three inch micrometer now if you're not familiar with how one of these work fully extended you're at three inches and then if you run it all the way in you've got a two inch gap now each one of these lines right here represent a hundred thousandths and then each line in between that represents 25 thousandths. And then you have a dial here. You notice, you spin it around, it stops at 25 and goes back to zero. So that means for every one full revolution of this, it's going to close up one of those 25 thousandths gaps in there. We're going to be somewhere at the 2.6 range. So that right there is set at 2.600. This lever right here is a lock. It's where you can lock it in place and it won't move on you. And then the end here is a ratcheting mechanism to where when this stops, that'll start to click to where you don't over tighten it helps you find the precise measurement now i'm going to slide it over my journal and try to get it as centered as possible we're going to spin this until we start to feel a little bit of resistance then we're going to start using our ratcheting one but that's not going to let us go any further than that we'll close that off pull that out yeah, we're at 2.549 because we're one line under the zero, which means we're one line under 50. It means that that right there is at the second line. Lock this tight. We're going to record our measurement. So our number one main on the crank is 2.549. Now a lot of the times these are going to be really close within each other. 2.549. One of the main things too is you have your oil galleys right here in the crankshaft. You want to make sure that neither end of your mic is hanging up in that or else that's going to throw off your reading so you want to make sure you stay away from those try to get it as centered up on that journal as possible where you're measuring the highest point 2.549 again and that's one prime example of why we use the machinists that we used is because of precision and consistency. Uh, so that's going to kind of show you guys how to measure the crank journals and how to set your mic up. From there, once you play with the mic a little bit, it'll become easier and more of a second nature for you to set the dial and figure out exactly where you want to set it. And sometimes you might read the numbers wrong. You've got to start over. Sometimes you might find yourself doing it twice just to make sure that you had correct calculations. Uh, but that's all part of it. And it's all about making sure that we have the proper clearances within an engine that we need. So that being said, now we can set the micrometer to what our crank journals are set at. So we've got it set to the 2.549. And then we're gonna take our dial bore gauge. And the idea here is to center this up 
in the tool, zero the gauge out. That way, when we put this in there and measure the bearing itself, whatever number the gauge reads is our bearing clearance. And then you can take that bearing clearance, add it to the crank journal size, and that's going to give you the overall bearing ID. On your dial board gauge, you're going to have different attachments for the end. It's going to dictate what length you can measure. And then it's got a roller tip in it. We've got two wheels here and another smaller roller tip right there. Now the whole idea here is you're going to get this thing in here and you're going to be able to swing the gauge. And when you swing that gauge, you see we come out to about ten and a half thousandths. The reason the gauge is reading ten and a half thousandths right now is because we just measured the bottom end in another LT where the crankshaft was only polished. That right there shows they took about ten thousandths off of this crankshaft. But now what we need to do is we need to zero this thing out. I need to move this another ten and a half to put us at twenty one. Now when you're looking at one of these dial board gauges, each line is a half thousandths, not a full thousandths. That's why you see zero to five, but we have 10 lines in between zero and five. So the shorter lines are going to be your halves and the longer lines are going to be the singles. So now if I put this back in the tool, unless I got it mixed up, we should be close to zeroed out. You see how that thing swings all the way to about one and a half right at two, but it doesn't hit zero all the way. We're okay, one. All right, so I need to move it back one more thousand. All right, we, that's zero. You can see we're hitting zero, and if I keep swinging it, it moves back. That's because we get past the pivot point. You want the max of the pivot point to be at zero. Now with our gauge zeroed out, we're going to slide it into main journal number one, and we're going to rock this thing back and find the max pivot, which is right there. It's going to be the third line, so that's going to be a one and a half thousandths clearance. Now one thing that's important you want to make sure you don't get it in that groove right there. If you notice, we have a little bit of oil on the bearing. That's just regular motor oil, and we didn't apply a lot. We don't want to throw off our measurement, but at the same time, we don't want to scratch this bearing, and we want to lubricate our roller tip here a little bit. So we check bearing clearance number one. Now we're going to go back. We're going to write that down. One thousandth in a decimal is point zero zero one. And then the half is going to be another five. And now if we add that clearance to our crank journal, that's going to give us the inner diameter of the bearing inside the block. All right, so now we're going to repeat that process for every bearing within the block, measured every crank journal. And then we're going to move over and we're going to do the same exact concept for the rod bearings. We're going to measure the journals on the crankshaft for the rods, document it, set the micrometer to that, zero out the bore gauge with the micrometer, and then we measure the clearance on each individual rod with the bore gauge. We document everything just like we did with the main bearings, and as soon as we get done with that, we pop these main caps off, we drop the crankshaft in, and the pistons are ready to go on the rods. We hope you found this video helpful, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at 727motorsportsar at gmail.com, or you can message us through the Contact Us page on our website, 727motorsports.net. Of course, we'll link the tools that we use down in the comments, the micrometer set, and the dial board gauge. And lastly, I want to say that we know there's other ways to check your bearing clearances. We've used plastic gauge, but if you have bearings like these that have a Teflon coating or some kind of other coating on them, that plastic gauge tends to adhere to those bearings and you have a pretty good chance of scratching off some of that coating when you're trying to clean the plastic gauge off the bearing. And besides plastic gauge isn't 100% accurate, this is actually getting down to the nitty gritty and figuring out exactly what the clearances are within the bottom end of your engine. But anyway, we hope you found it helpful. And if you have any questions, let us know. We'll help out any way we can. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Find us on social media at 727 Motorsports. And until next time, if you're not following us, grab that button.